Well, welcome to another Classics World uh, video. And before we indulge ourselves in these Daimler delights, I thought I'd just mention uh, Jaguar World and Classic Jaguar magazines. Classic Jaguar is six times a year and generally covers these sort of era and older Jaguars, while Jaguar World covers all models. So uh, look in the description below where there'll be links to the relevant shop page where you can look at back issues or subscriptions on either of those titles. <laughs> It was 50 years ago in 1971 that Jaguar finally introduced its V12 engine into a road car, that being the Series 3 Jaguar E-Type. And a year later, the V12 appeared in probably its natural home, the Saloon. And initially in its Series 1 guys, it went on to power Jaguars for 26 years. We were never to know it was to be that long a lived an engine. We brought together two cars today. We've got a fairly late Series 3 edition, a Daimler Double Six guys. And we've got this, probably the ultimate incarnation of the V12, the X305 6 litre V12. So we thought we'd put both of these silky smooth V12 powered saloons through their paces to see how the V12 Jaguar evolved. So welcome everybody to the XJ that should never have been. Back in 1979, the Series 3 XJ was introduced primarily as a stopgap to fill in the time between the Series 2 becoming a slightly aging edition of the XJ and the all new XJ40 coming out. Now that was intended to be 1983, but actually the XJ40 didn't come into being until 1986. So the Series 3 actually soldiered on for seven years. While a lot of people expected the V12 to be obsolete by then, there was still actually a huge demand for these big cylinder engines. The XJ40 was never designed to accept a wide V format engine. To meet the demand for a V12, the Series 3 had to soldier on for even longer. So between 1986, when the XJ40 first came out, and 1992, Jaguar offered the V12 in the Series 3 body shell in both Jaguar and Daimler derivatives. This is a Daimler double six edition. This is a 1992 car and it really is a kind of cast iron stove in a microwave age. You know, you think come the early 90s, Mercedes were offering their S-Class with all manner of electronics and gizmos and double glazing and all those kind of mod cons. But in a way, this is probably part of the Series 3's charm by then. It's, you know, ostensibly a, a design that hails from 1968. But you do have an incredibly charming package. The design is just superb. Those curvaceous lines, sort of refined and honed by Pininfarina for the Series 3 shape, are just elegant and graceful. They're unlike anything else on the road, sort of then and now. A lot of the reason the XJ12 lasted perhaps as well as it did was simply because the engine, when it first came out in 1971, was arguably ahead of its time. It was a fabulous piece of kit. Single overhead camshaft on each, each bank. It had around 260 horsepower when it first came out and subsequent improvements with fuel injection and the HE edition in 1981 onwards meant that it was delivering about 295 horsepower. It made it a genuine 150 mile an hour saloon and capable of sprinting to 60 in just under eight seconds. But don't think that's really the purpose of the car. This is not a B-road chasing dynamic saloon. This is about wafting along elegantly, gracefully. It's so comfortable, it's so refined. It's uh, unlike anything else I've ever driven really. Its proportions are, are superb. It's not so big and unwieldy like a Mark 10 would be. It definitely feels like a slightly wallowy barge of a car. It, it will lean through corners and that's why you should never rush it. This is about taking a nice relaxed pace. If you wanted to buy one of these, principally of all, you've definitely got to look out for rust. So you've got to keep an eye out for box sections and seals and suspension mounting points and all that kind of stuff. But other than that, this V12 engine needs the right coolant and it needs changing every two years. And if, and if you don't, uh, you, will, you will pay the price for it. It's just sublimely comfortable. You could imagine covering a long, long distance in a car like this. It's an absolute lesson in refinement and elegance. Come 92, this XJ12 is arguably the last of an era. The car that stems from the XJ6 Series 1 of 1968. So it harks back to those halcyon days of Jaguar where it was really able to hold a candle to some of the bigger 
mainstream prestige manufacturers. It was offering luxury, elegance and performance, but at a price that was substantially cheaper than any of its competitors. The Dame was the icing on the cake, really. You just get a few extra luxuries, some nicer piping around the seats and some lambs wool rugs just to really enhance that luxurious feel. It's a, it's a lovely thing, a real carriage, a beautiful way to travel. So you join me now in an X300 V12, specifically the X305 was the model code. It's, it's a strange situation that Jaguar found itself in where it brought out the six cylinder XJ40 in 1986, not anticipating bringing a V12 model with it, but actually there was still high demand, particularly in some of the overseas markets, but they were already committed. The engine bay of the XJ40 was too narrow to accept a V8 or a V12, but uh, come the early 90s with some Ford dollars behind them, Jaguar could uh, redevelop the XJ40 platform to initially bring out the XJ81 six litre V12 in the XJ40 shape. Uh, that came out at the beginning of 93, but by then work was already well underway for the X300 shape. It wasn't that long before the XJ81 morphed into this, the X305, and this is again a Daimler version and a Japanese spec one, no less. It's a thing of beauty, it really is. Arguably the ultimate evolution of Jaguar's V12 powertrain. By the time we get to the six litre, what we end up with is a 315 horsepower V12 engine, 155 mile an hour top speed, and 0 to 60 in a shade under seven seconds. But very much in character with the predecessor, this is not a car to hustle. Enjoy the journey, not sort of rush to the destination. The ride comfort is really something to behold. There's just nothing on the road today that can match it really. It's peerless. I think the great thing about the X305 edition of the V12 is that it's managed to inherit all those superb qualities of the original series XJ12, but it's it's modernized it. It's taken it to a new level. People are scared of V12s for their fuel costs and maintenance, and it's certainly true. You wouldn't want to be doing 15,000 miles a year in something like this as your daily driver. But it's a good engine, it's, it's really robust. You know, it's mated to a GM four-speed automatic transmission. And if the fluid intervals are respected, you know, the engine and transmission are pretty much unburstable. And then again, you're back to the usual Jaguar traits of needing to make sure that the suspension is kept in tip-top form by replacing all the essential rubber bushes when they need to. If that's all kept on top of, then you really won't have a problem. The ride is still really supple, but actually it's a lot tauter on the road than the uh, original series. And I think, I think it strikes a much better balance in terms of ride and handling than the Series 3. So smooth, beautiful. Acceleration is just seamless. It just glides along. Barely a murmur from the engine. It's just glorious. Come 97 though, despite all that hard work improving the V12 engine, Jaguar had introduced the V8 engine. The four litre V8 engine was almost as powerful, almost as quick, and yet it was more fuel efficient. The X308 came out in 97 and effectively could effortlessly replace both the six cylinder and the 12 cylinder X300 models in one fell swoop. But I've really grown to love the X300. So I think it's a bit of a budget makeover of the XJ40. And Ford didn't have enough money to develop an all new XJ, but my God, they spent the money wisely. It's a really well refined, evolution of the XJ line. The interior is well stitched together. It's actually a beautiful cabin, quite traditional looking, but everything's well laid out, sort of acres of wood and leather. There's an opulence, a style to it, which I really like. X305 is arguably the finest evolution of the XJ line. Classic performance and elegance from a V12 engine that arguably should have been phased out long ago, but it's got power and refinement in spades. It's got classical styling and yet it's got some modern day dependency on it. Yes, you might need shares in an oil company, but what a glorious way to travel. Right, well that was a lot of fun. Two Jaguar V12 saloons from two very different eras. Remember that it's a 5.3 V12 that effectively dates back to the early 70s, whereas this is a mid 90s six litre but both very, very similar cars, both in terms of how they look and their concept. In many ways, something as 
gas guzzling as a V12 Jaguar seems completely out of time when we talk about modern cars and electric cars and things like that. But maybe that's the point. Actually, if we're going to travel less often, having something as ostentatious, as luxurious and as graceful as a V12 Jaguar is maybe something to consider for those sort of Sunday drives or long weekends away. Either of these cars would suit that purpose sort of very well. For me, it would be the 305, but don't rule out something as uh, glorious as the Series 3. Both of these cars represent an absolute sort of pinnacle of Jaguar, in my opinion, sort of the very height of grace, pace and space. Mm -hmm.